Good morning, church. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, and for some, today is Cinco de Mayo. In our house, it's Cinco de Michael, because our oldest grandson has a birthday today. Nevertheless, we are celebrating the fact that soon we're going to all be back together. All of us are looking forward to that time. We're inching closer to that time. We'll soon be back. We're not sure exactly yet what that's going to look like and how that's going to be phased in, but the time is coming. Our elders on Sunday announced that we'll be meeting as we have been this coming Sunday, but then they are going to meet again and reevaluate, listening to our health experts, and then they'll make some decisions about what happens after that. Nevertheless, it's, it's close. Our time is coming. One of the things that I have been amazed at is the universal problem that this virus has presented. Everyone is affected. Celebrities are affected. Sports personalities are affected. The rich, the poor, it makes no difference. Democrats, Republicans, it makes no difference. Politicians are affected. Every business has been affected. Every church has been affected. Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, all have been affected. The Aborigine from Australia has been affected, like the London bookstore owner. The hot dog vendors in New York City. The leaders in the Kremlin and the fishermen in South Africa. Everybody on this earth has been affected by this. The saying that we're all in this together, it's become kind of the slogan for the day. I want to read you a quote. One of my favorite speech makers is John Kennedy, President John Kennedy. He made magnificent speeches. One of those speeches was identified as his peace speech. And let me read you this quote out of that speech. So let us not be blind to our differences, but let us also direct our attention to our common interests and to the means by which those differences can be resolved. And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet we all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future. And we are all mortal. We all breathe the same air. It takes on a whole new meaning now, doesn't it? Maybe, maybe what this has done is to make us realize our equality with each other and our common vulnerability to the problems of this world. And when we realize that equality, and when we realize our common vulnerabilities, we can understand the need that we have to respect one another. If you know that I respect you, the barriers are broken down between us. It's interesting that when Paul was writing to the Ephesians, explaining to them the very nature of the church, he used the illustration of the relationship between a husband and a wife. And in that illustration, he told husbands that they should love their wives, but he told wives that they were to respect their husbands. When a wife knows that her husband, when a husband knows that his wife respects him, he will go to the end of the earth to do the rest of what Paul was instructing to love her even as Christ loved the church. There's a connection between respect and love. Knowing this, and knowing that we are to love people, it is the right place for us to start when we choose to respect people. Respect for the people that you may not have thought much about before. Respect for those whose voice is seldom heard. Respect for fellow workers. Respect for family members. Respect for our neighbor. 
even the one with the barking dog or the one with the loud music. Respect for those people in the other political party, whichever way that flows. Respect for those people who have annoyed you in the past. And respect for each new person that we meet. God offered us an opportunity. He is offering us an opportunity right now to get a fresh start. We've been separated from one another, and soon we'll be seeing people again. Imagine, just imagine, if when we see them for the first time, we react with respect. If we did that, this whole experience would have some value that we may not have recognized before. We don't have to come to perfect agreement with everybody on everything, but we can respect why they think the way they do. We don't have to sacrifice our opinions, but we should respect the fact that they also have their own opinions, and they have those opinions for a reason. In truth, and this is the bottom line for us as Christians, in truth, we would like all people to be united in Christ. Right now, unity in Christ is far from a reality, even though it's something that Jesus prayed for there in the garden shortly before he was arrested. But overcoming division does not happen by force, or even by my opinion overcoming your opinion. Overcoming division Experiencing a common bond in Christ starts with respect. God himself respected people enough to humble himself even to the point of, a cro of being crucified on the cross to demonstrate his love. He respected people that much. More, he respected you. He respected me that much. Now is the time for us to humble ourselves so that we can respect others. When Jesus washed the feet of the apostles, he was showing them a respect beyond anything that they had ever experienced before. Now it's our turn. Let us respect people so that we might love them, so that we might be united in a whole new way. The opportunity is ours. Let's go out and love and respect people even today. Bye for now.